I worked in the Senate running a staff of, uh, for Gaylord Nelson, the founder of Earth Day, uh, the Wisconsin senator who was a great environmentalist. And uh, we lived at the time of a particular moment when there were great liberal progress. It happened to be the moment in the mid-60s. Goldwater had taken down a large number of members of the House. There were 66 senators who were Democrats. Lyndon Johnson jammed through the Great Society. And we thought that was what was going to happen for, uh, forever. But in fact, it was a temporary moment and very shortly thereafter, the balance was restored that blocked things. So, uh, but I come out of that tradition, uh, and one of the one of the things that really made me think about all of this was the capacity of that system to solve problems was actually narrowing as time went on. The period from the Great Depression through the modern Great Society, the New Deal, and the Great Society were really an aberrant moment in American history and American liberalism. We're in a different period now, I think, where that, we're not, the pendulum isn't going to swing. We may develop a new pendulum out of the groundwork in a very different way, but the old notion the pendulum will swing that we used to believe in those days, I think was wrong. It was the tail end of a movement that came about because of the great crisis of the Depression, World War II, and the boom. Uh, and that was a special moment in history. We live in a different era um, that I think people have yet to come to terms with. What ultimately drove me to worry about these things, and I think ought to drive other people, is expansionist systems become imperial systems. They have to, in the history of American expansion into the global market, was a, was a vision of an informal empire, not a colonial empire, but one that had American interests at heart and often led to interventions that were violent. Uh, and I think that source, undercutting that source by a more democratic and more stable system is ultimately critical. I think it's critical not only for us, but for critical for many, many parts of the developing world where our mistakes are visited on them so often. Uh, so I would drive it back deeply to the sources of expansionism in this particular corporate capitalist system and undermining those by building a more stable and healthy system. Uh, a positive direction, I think in both cases, is the answer. Uh, a reconstruction of that direction, uh, even as we try to limit the damage. Uh, one of the hardest problems is we live in a society that is continental in scale. You could drop Germany into Washington and Oregon combined. Those tiny little European countries, they are tiny compared with this continental system. Uh, it's very hard to have a society now over 300 million people in a gigantic continent have a system of participatory democracy. It doesn't ring, doesn't make sense. We're going to be 500 million by mid-century. The Census Bureau projects its high number for the end of the century as 1.1 billion. Even if we don't get to those numbers, any society that wants to be democratic will have to decentralize. You cannot run it all from Washington. And you cannot run it all with a, a dying constitutional structure that is obviously unable to make major decisions. At some point, that means decentralization. Decision-making decentralized, both because of the size and because of the constitutional structure that prevents action. Most states are too small to make really serious decisions. The country is too large. The obvious intermediate scale to which this all points logically is the region, New England. California is a region. The notion that the country ultimately will in some way decentralize to regional structures I think is self-evident. It's a very difficult one, but maybe the attack on what's happening in Washington now and the deadlock and the feeling that something is really wrong there will lead people to say either we do it in a new way and build up to a, a new constitutional crisis over the next 30 years that I think ultimately leads towards some form of decentralization compatible with democracy compatible with these very large changes of numbers. So we'll see, but I think that's in the cards over the long haul if we build towards it.